All right, everybody, welcome back to Black Medium. We took a little week off because, well, I can because I'm the host, Gold Will. With your boy Electronic Jack, a.k.a. Linwood Storm, a.k.a. The Mac with the facts coming at you live. Oh, you're not going to say flexing those uh, pectoral <laughs> <laughs> like you said in the previous take? I have no idea what you're talking about or referring to. So oh, yeah, this let's get first. on with the topic of discussing well, here. Oh, I just gonna, hold on. I was just going to, we were talking about your screenplays and whatnot. So, you know, uh, what you call it? Uh, how, how's the screenplays going? You said you wrote everything for the year? All my screenplays are completed. I just got to shoot the shit. So no, no, no shooting is done yet. Have you oh, even- and everyone, guess what? The fifth multiverse myths short story is out on GameCargo.com. So be sure to check that out. The Space oh, so Age Mansion of Man Samusa. I have, I have not seen you promote these at all. I should promote them more. I, I'll, I'll link them on my Facebook page and Twitter, but it'll just be like a one-time thing, and then I'll move on to the next. So I'll, I'll, I'll be. I don't sure know. It sounds more. like you're not proud of your work. I'm. Just oh, saying. I'm fucking proud of my work. All right. Oh, okay. I, like, I, I there is a whole. I don't there, know. There are layers to the GC verse right I, now I, that I, I'm just. I'm sorry. I just I'm haven't blown, heard about this. My, my mind is blown. Like, due it, to it you know it, like it would be like having a kid and never mentioning them you know like great not even not even once <laughs> <laughs> you know what i'm saying you over here not trying to hide your stories from the world you're trying to <laughs> on your stories okay? <laughs> i'm so, i don't know you need to you need to, i'm sorry good shit good shit. i need to promote the stories like we need to promote this cast more but that is true that mm-hmm. is true you know i have been slacking on it and also you can see there's a bit of a, a locale change uh, we rearranged the office a little bit, so he's got his own office now. He, he's big time right now. It's he's got just, he's got on the African uh, the beads. I've always had these on. I mean, I I, sw- I rock between the the gold chain with the fist on it and uh, the the beads. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, proud of his African heritage. Yeah, something like that. Ah, I mean, you know, I I, I don't know. I, I feel like I don't act black enough. Oh boy, I don't. I don't go to enough um, fight the power. Black right. enough. What, what's that? What's that? Uh, there was a movie that was like that. Oh, I forgot. I forgot his name. It was a friend of mine. Um, I think I know what you're talking about too. It just came out, right? He's he's an independent filmmaker, so it's like ah, uh, being was it being black enough? Yeah, I think it was being black enough or not black yeah. enough. Yeah, being black enough. Because I remember seeing a trailer for it and it actually looked decent. I just never. Yeah, it's that. called being black enough. Yeah. Yeah, I never. Um, what you call it? I didn't watch the film. I should have though, because it was like, it was basically what everybody be talking about. You know, like. Yeah. Somebody trying to act black and just looking foolish for it. Devin Rice <laughs> is the filmmaker behind the picture, by the way, guys. So, check out. You know, being black enough by Devin Rice. At a budget of twenty three thousand dollars. See, that's determination right there. Like, yes. you see, you don't need millions to shoot these films. If only one of us. All was you really need is seven thousand dollars. Robert Rodriguez, El Mariachi. If only one of us was a filmmaker. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm waiting. I, I was just, I, I was waiting for. You. I mean, I got I the equipment. Like I said, I'm, yeah. I'm just juggling so many projects. Why are you juggling them? See, so, come on, man. Am, am I supposed to outsource to, uh, you myself from parallel universes? You should know better. That's a right? reference to my recent story, guys. So y'all check it out. The one I don't know about is it called Adonis? <laughs> Oh, I'm you're sorry. funny. Like I said, you've been very quiet on your short story. You've been telling me. Yeah, I've, I've been telling you. you been telling I've been telling I know. What Privately. I need to do is I what I need to do is market more. It's out there. It's public. It's on the website. I just need to market more. I definitely you need don't to even market, market more. your website. What I'm trying to tell you. No, I'm I'm marketing my website sometimes. Look, all right. I need a marketer. I need a marketer. Okay. Why don't you go pay an, uh, an Indian guy to do that? <laughs> no, I I love why why does it have to be Indian guy? How come it can't be another black man or a black woman? All right. I don't think nobody I outsourced to nobody my wants to market at times. 
<laughs> I seen the shit you write. Ain't nobody trying to market that. These you know, self-respecting black man would want it. Why is my sto- are my stories not black enough? I don't know. Are they? <laughs> <laughs> that depends. Are they about black trauma? Because everything has to be about because uh, that's slavery, what this cast is about. Yeah, sports, that's the topic of this cast. Yeah, <laughs> slavery, <laughs> sports. Uh, what else? What else? You know, uh, I being I mean, stopped by the cops, historical figures who jail were, who were slaves or killed or in sports or shot. The by fact the fact that America seems to think that black fatherhood is very minuscule. I mean, damn. Yeah, so that's the topic of this podcast, uh, which you call it Black Trauma. It seems to be a hot topic, although I want to be on record. Just want to say this. I, I've already been bored with this topic for, for over a decade. I've been very vocal He talks about, about it. it nonstop. And like, wow, now, all of a sudden, the everybody of else is fed up. About drugs. Damn, now everybody else is fed up with it. Like 10 years behind me. I was like, <laughs> that, that's that's the problem I have with you because you're like, ah, I was there first. I was I mean, there first. Okay, picture you in my shoes, right? You say, hey guys, uh, a lot of these black films really aren't diverse in subject matter. You know, we could have like maybe you know, some some weird adventure on some island, maybe a pirate ship or something like that. I, and I've been saying this for Here, 10 years. Here's the Everybody's thing, like, though. these are important films. Schools ain't teaching it. So we here's gotta, the thing, how though. How are we going to learn? Like, uh, books don't exist. We are two privileged black men. How are you going to call me? With oxy. What? You, you're saying you're not privileged? No. What the fuck? I'm not saying you're, I'm not saying you're as privileged as I am, but you are you, you're pretty how privileged. I, how am I you're fucking privileged? privileged? What privileges you're, do I have? You're pretty privileged. You're pretty privileged. All oh right. You're, you're not living in no hood. You ain't Actually, in no I hood? am. Actually, I am. There, there was just a shooting really? here. Last, yeah, there was just a shooting here last week. Two bodies. Uh, Dee's friend actually saw the bodies on the street when she was leaving. And we just you know had, what? We had two apartment fires, two days apart from each other. One was You know Christmas. what, my brother? What? That sounds like a choice to me. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't understand how people say I'm privileged. People say I'm privileged because I have both my parents. And I'm just like, that's the norm? I don't... Like, I mean, I, are you... <laughs> I mean, I get it. There are people who grow up without, you know, both parents in their lives. But, mm-hmm. I mean... You I have both like, parents. All right, you have both like, parents. You can talk to both parents. Yeah. Um, you're well but I don't educated. Feel like that's an advantage. I feel like that's just a disadvantage of other people. I mean, let's talk. Let's talk about privilege. What privileges do white people have over black people? Uh, for instance, this is a good. To- this is a topic of discussion. I mean, I'm, I'm just. I'm just. I'm just trying to discuss it. I'm not oh, trying yeah, no, no, to. No, no, you know, oh no, there's yeah. a lot of there's a lot of privileges they have. Number because one, because when we talk about privilege, like I said, I can say that I grew up very privileged, yeah. and. I know. Like, like I said, a, a lot of white people that I know did not grow up like I did. Well, now, they grew up broke, busted. That now, keep in mind, I don't give a fuck about those white people being poor. But, I but mean, I, I'll, I'll, I'll call a spade a spade. They did not grow up like I did. Unfortunately, well, white privilege isn't necessarily a pro, uh, uh, a primarily monetary thing. Classes, right? Okay. So right. you know, Sorry, it, it's not. Them. Yeah. It's not necessarily monetary. Like for instance, our names, George and Trevor. They're about as far removed from African as you could possibly get, right? My middle name is fucking British. My my last name is fucking British, so yeah. Yeah, I mean, and you know why that is? I mean, I know why mine is. I've said it before in the cast is because my dad wanted me to get jobs on a job application. I've seen job applications thrown out with black names. I've actually Mm -hmm. seen it. I mean, that's Quanda. Yeah, Quisa. Uh, actually, what's funny that you Tyrone, say that, that name, I told you about my uh, racist friend who who was talking to me about it. Like he was like coming to me like a therapist. Like I think I'm racist. Your racist ex friend or ex-friend. your racist? Yeah, he, okay. He, he, yeah. you gotta, oh, right, right. Let me clarify. Yeah. That, that guy is no longer on the friends list. He's blocked with a T. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> I think I'm racist. But yeah, he made a joke. It's like, yeah, I wouldn't hire a Laquisha, and I was like, see. There's that bullshit I was talking about. How do you know LaQuisha wouldn't be your best worker? All you said is you're not going to hire her because of her name. And I know you think it's a joke, but that actually fucking happens. Like, 
I mean, there's black people out here getting. I don't think he was joking. I think he was being serious. I think he was being of, serious. I don't. I, I think it was a lot of people serious. think that way, and that's the thing. A lot of black people think that way as well. That's that's what I keep saying. Like, oh yeah, it's kind of. I, I kinda agree sad, with Duran when he says that uh, we're we're being we've been infected by oh, well, yeah, this their problem. European you know status. Yeah, it's 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 United States uh, education there. Uh, mm-hmm. That's that's one that's one uh, privilege there. Uh, another privilege is did you know about the study that they did on police stops where uh, police stops drop significantly after the sun goes down because the police can no longer tell the skin color of the person riding in the vehicle. Um, I've never heard of the study. I've never read it, but I well, yeah. definitely believe you. I it believe dropped you. by a massive percentage because during the daytime they could see as a black person, but when it became nighttime, this, the uh, the stops drop significantly because it's harder to tell who's in the vehicle. That was another one. Uh, I can link you to that study and I'll, I'll drop that into definitely uh, the video uh, description. Um, that's another way that uh, white people are privileged. Obviously, there's uh, sentencing privilege for white people. I mean, they found that black people on average get much, much harsher sentences for the exact really? same crime. For, yeah, controlled for conditions, the exact same crime. <laughs> um you, you know like i saw on beyond scared straight actually uh one of the kids he was like 15 he got 30 years for credit card fraud it was his first crime they mm-hmm. charged him as an adult so that's another thing uh speaking of which black people are often seen as much older than they actually are despite you know not being that old we're all yeah yeah we're often assumed to be much older than we actually are which isn't actually uh necessarily true in our looks but it's a prejudice thing you know that's another thing uh white shooters are given a much more benefit of the doubt than unarmed black people yeah you know? they get brought in alive <laughs> yeah. calm down i know that you've just gunned down and all it, of these people but it's much much even we it's want much, you much to worse. say goodbye to your family before you go to jail it's much, much worse in the coverage, actually. The coverage of white shooters is insane to the point where the uh, sheriff, I think, the sheriffs are saying he was just having a bad day after gunning he was down distraught. Asian women. He, he just had His a bad Asian day. girlfriend broke up with him. Like, we've all been there. Yeah, we've all been there. <laughs> like, you know, like, to the point where the law enforcement is running cover for them. Like, showing and and then there's news outlets that cover the shootings and they'll even sometimes show the victim's mud shot because yep and they will do a deep dive on a black person's history it, hmm. when this, this guy got a c in yeah. algebra once he wasn't that perfect <laughs> Bro, he had iss once like his his best friend smoked weed once and you college. know what they See, do that bad bullshit. association that's why it was sad for some reason, they also look up the family of people who have been involved in scandals. Like, for instance, famously Harambe. They looked at the child's father's history. Mm-hmm. For some reason, that was relevant to the Harambe story. There's a lot of privilege that white people got. I mean, there's a lot of that's just completely undeniable. And it would take an ignorant ass uh, set of eyes to completely ignore it. Yep. But. Either way, you know, but we, I wouldn't consider myself privileged. I definitely started off more or less lower class. I'm finally middle class on my own. Like mm-hmm. I'm actually in the middle class task bracket, you know, hooray for me. So I, I work hard to be this poor. You know what I mean? I feel sorry for you. I mean, you see all these video games, that those games, $60 a pop. <laughs> Maybe that's why you're in your tax bracket. I mean, I've collected those over the course of 12 years. I'm just saying I ain't paying no $60 for no video games, but that's another, you know. That's Tell me what game system this. you have again. I have, I still have my original Xbox and my uh-huh. Xbox 360. That's right. And I you play don't have PC shit. games, so I yeah. play PC games. I play PC games. Yeah, you don't, you don't have nothing. You have a PC that like overheated just before this podcast. It didn't overheat. You know, re- there's something wrong with the USB port, and that's why the microphone couldn't connect to it. So I had to restart it, and somehow that got the USB port working. That made it but sound my worse. Laptop, my, my laptop still plays the PC games that I wanted to play. And what games are those? Something recent or just in general? Just in general. Go ahead. Surprise. Assassin's Creed games. It plays the Assassin's Creed games. So. You play them on medium graphics? 
Does it matter? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Does it matter? Just say you're broke. Just PCs, say you're broke. So I'm, so I'm broke because I don't want yeah, to spend my money say, on something that you would spend your money say, on. That's another say, problem with black people, too. Just say That's you're another broke problem with and black people, on. too. It's okay. That's another reason why we have a whole bunch of rappers <laughs> blonde their shit. Like, also, I have to, I have to, I have to pay this amount of money for a coat just to, just to have y'all know that I got it like that. You know, I used to- I'm still driving the same car that I had, you know, that I first purchased at, yeah, 19, 19. I mean, Mercury Sable, 1996. I, I was right? heavily influenced by rappers back in the day. I wanted I those diamond I crosses. <laughs> I wanted those diamond crosses so bad with the platinum. See, you, chain. you grew up with the rappers. I grew up with my uh, capitalist father going, you know, giving me the rich dad, poor dad books and like, hey, look, don't dress like you got money. All right. Like, have money, and that way you can go to the uh, meeting in your sweatpants. All right, See, that, that, that's how I was raised. My dad was very much like myself right now, into hip hop and a bunch of ignorant shit. So, you know. <laughs> but see, that's that that's the point. Like, and here's the thing: why do we spend this money as black men? Why do we really spend this money for each other? Are we trying to impress each other. Are we trying to impress pussy. I'm trying to impress myself. I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I, but why I, are you trying I, to impress yourself? Because I want more shit. <laughs> I want more shit. Look, I'll be honest with you. I'm a greedy motherfucker. I like money and I like stuff. Okay. See, see we're the complete opposite. I'm, I'm, I'm a minimalist. All right. I, if I have too much stuff, it overwhelms me. Like, like psychologically, I'm like, oh no, wh- wh- where's my shit? Where's my shit? Where's my shit? Mm. So I like having the least amount of stuff as possible. That brings me peace. All right. Now, when it comes to women, you know. I like having options. I like having options. So. I, I I like women too. That's about all I can say, really. I see you right next to you, AC. No, no, I she is not. But she gonna listen to the point. podcast and be like, "Yeah, motherfucker, that's that's what you better say." <laughs> <laughs> all right, that, that's about all I can say. Like, I like to have shit. Like I said, ain't nothing wrong with that. But like like I said, what was you saying before you said that we we were privileged? I guess we're privileged in the fact that we're not dead. I don't know. I feel like that's a low bar. To Look, so here's the thing. Here's the thing. When I went over to the Philippines, I met some poor ass motherfuckers. Shout out to my Filipino brothers. But their ghettos are horrible compared to ours. All right. So when I came back from the Philippines, I was like, damn, I got to I'm I was thankful for everything I had at that moment. All right. Because it could always be worse. So that's why I say, yeah, we are privileged to have access to the certain amount of um, information available. A lot of, I think if, I think a lot of people, when, when, I, when I say privilege, I'm, I'm talking about the ability to gain certain opportunities. Not every opportunity is gonna go, is gonna come your way, but the ability to know which doors to open I think that also has to do with being privileged. I mean, I get that. I get that. Uh, I never really like to compare myself. Like, if I were to say privilege in that sense, we're privileged globally, you know, like in in comparison to a lot of countries around the globe, you know, we have running water. Uh, mm-hmm. We have shit that we take for granted, right? You know, they're talking about water. It's about to become, you know, an even more hotly contested commodity than it already is. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. It's all relative as yeah. well. It's That's what I mean. Relative. But I feel like relatively in our country, ain't no privilege. Not for us. <laughs> we both are are basically come I'm, up stories. Mm, you more so than me. But <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I definitely did not have wealth coming up. All right. I, I did not have property to be handed down. So relatively to this area, I ain't privileged. But globally, you're right. There are some people who don't have what I have, but I don't live there. Mm-hmm. Like I, I don't live there. I can't really say that. Privilege is also <laughs> being able to go over to those countries with the uh yeah, with is. the money that you have and live like a king. <laughs> I mean, that is true. Like I said, that is true. And you know what? You can't help that. <laughs> That's what I keep saying, but I get called a vulture. Like, you're a vulture. You know, you're going there. I'm like, I I donate. But it's not my fault that, you know, 
Yeah, their is. their their dollar is two cents for me over yeah. here. You can't help that shit. That's well, it. What, what am I supposed know? to do? Destabilize the country? Yeah, like <laughs> am I supposed to jump in their politics? The fuck? <laughs> but uh what you call it? Yeah, um, so we're we're relatively privileged people to talk about this subject, but mm-hmm. it does um it does kind of strike a chord with a lot of people. Like I said, back in the day, you know, I was already saying this 10 years ago, and I'd already been suggesting that we need to break out of this uh these habits of simply uh writing about what's immediately around us because i believe it can drive you fucking mad personally Mm -hmm. like i don't like engaging with reality very much if that makes sense i just you prefer escapism right yeah i've always practiced escapism ever since i was a kid Mm -hmm. and you know i played a lot of excellent video games i mean my favorite video game is super mario world and I mean that. Yeah, but did you have time? You, you you obviously had time to escape as well. A lot of people don't have that time to escape, so they, they can only write about what they know as well. There's a lot of kids who came from New York just like me, in the exact same military housing that I was in. You know. Like, I mean, but not all those <laughs> kids had the same time that you did. You know, here's the thing, and here's what I've noticed with lower income families: the dad's working. The mom's working. Oh, yeah. The brothers and sisters may also be working. Nine times out of ten, they're also working as well to support the household. Mm-hmm. Personally, I believe that children should not be working to support the household. That's the parents' responsibility. But nine times out of ten, the children are working, and they don't have time for video games and and reading comic books and the little bit of time they do have, they're just trying to relax. Now, maybe they do that, but you know, it reminds me of a story that Michael Jai White told um, because he grew up in harsh neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. He was, I I believe he uh, spoke about running from a gang or whatnot. And he, and he ran into an influent neighborhood Mm -hmm. and he looked at the houses and he was like, I want one of these one day. I do that a lot. A lot, of, a lot of a lot of us haven't even been out the state. And I'm not talking just black. I'm, I'm talking about like Americans. A lot of Americans don't go outside of their own state unless they're traveling somewhere and then they go right back. All right. Mm-hmm. So that's one thing we we have to do. We have to normalize just travel. We have to normalize just exploring, you know. Right. Uh, and it's like, keep in mind, this is just my observations, but you have neighborhoods and um, there are certain neighborhoods that you don't venture into. So I believe that is part of the problem. If you grow up in a neighborhood where it's like, hey, stick to what you know, stick to your neighborhood and you won't get in trouble, then you're not going to want to venture outside of it. You know, you're, you're, you're going to be not only comfortable but you're going to uh, feel more secure around an environment that you already know. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I think while I do agree with the point that a lot of people don't have the time, I feel like that's partially not applicable to uh, writers who pick up the creators. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Creators who don't, who, who pick up the pen in the first place and, you know, they definitely find it a time to do this. I feel like, I don't know, maybe it's a- Now, here, here's another thing. Lack of engagement with, you know, uh, other points of view. Here's another thing. We also have to look at the people who are picking these writers and creators for the spotlight. You know, oh. like, like, that, like that one meme where it's like, it's so 50 cent asleep when it said, uh, you know, white producers, when a, when a black person pitches an idea that doesn't have anything to do with basketball or, or drugs or, you or know, slavery. Uh, yeah. Slavery. <laughs> oh yeah. Hey, hey. <laughs> and this is a callback to the previous cast. Like, no, no wait, I just, I just want to say this because, because here's the thing, white people, white, white people don't see us in those genres and the science fiction genres and the, the fantasy genres. All right. Which is why they don't green light books, which is why I said, yep. 
which is why I said in a previous cast, we need to own the means of production for ourselves so that we that. can so we can own our own <laughs> destiny so that people don't immediately like I'm not saying that if black people owned a distribution company that all black stories would get greenlit, you know, but I'm saying that the possibility of denying a black story that's interesting because we don't know how to market this mm-hmm. to white people is probably significantly lessened mm-hmm. probably now like, keep in mind we still have uh, again white people aside we still have to worry about our own as well because there are a lot of black people who are like uh this would never happen or uh, I, I just can't relate to this or eh, it's got a gay person in it <laughs> oh man i can't believe the homophobia still goes on the way it does but um what you call it <laughs> Black trauma is attractive right now for some reason. What was the? Damn. Let's be honest. It's always been attractive, even they, during the black exploitation era. Black exploitation thrives off of black people wanting to escape, wanting to to be in their own power fantasy, but still stuck in reality. All right. Ooh, uh, three the hard way. And keep in mind, I love three the hard way. One of my favorite movies ever. Mm-hmm. Three the hard way. You know, uh, this this white villain is poisoning the uh the water supply and, and these three black guys have to team up and stop them awesome that sounds fantastic but it, it's still playing on you know certain tropes so right i think that we're getting more and more of the uh interesting stuff uh what was it the fred hampton movie just came out right that was a good movie great film uh and then you had one night in miami and then you had uh there's a lot of black historical films coming out. What is with this shit? Uh, there's a lot of manpower we're putting behind, you know, films for for when we so can, here's a, here's another documentary. There are a lot of black old heads who are like, "Hey, this this history has to be told," and you know, these movies are educating the masses about things that they probably wouldn't have even learned. And I agree with that to an extent. But at the same time, it's being, it's definitely a trend that's being capitalized on. Read a book, To a nigga. degree that overset. Okay, so, so here's the thing. I agree, but I disagree because I'm one of those type of dudes who are like, after I watch a movie, it makes me want to research the sit. You know, based on true story. Oh, I got to research now. Like, I'm that type of dude. I, I love reading books and I love watching movies, but to introduce me to certain literature, I, I, I need an image in my head. And a lot of us, we, we watch, we consume more media, more TV and more movies than we do read books. And that's because we get images and it's a visual uh, medium. It, we get these images in the head. So now when we watch the, sorry, sorry now when we read the book, we're like, okay, so I, I can imagine the visuals playing out like this in that scenario. And we're not exactly comparing, but we're just, we're, we're matching everything. Say, so, oh, so this is what really happened. And um, it's like, for an example, uh, American Gods. I watched the American Gods television show before I read the book. Right. And when I started reading the book, I was like, oh, wow, this is, this is awesome. You realize and, Anansi don't do shit in the book. <laughs> that nigga is beyond useless. I love the show and I love the book. And <laughs> that shit was crazy. <laughs> and, and that's what a lot of old heads need to realize is that movies are meant to entertain. All right. Not everybody goes into a movie tr- trying to learn some shit, you know? Right. That's what I mean. Movies are for entertainment. And I, me personally, I don't like my education and entertainment to overlap like that. Don't like, be one of those woke dudes. It's not that. It's just, <laughs> Captain, it's, the Falcon, the Winter Soldier. This episode was pretty good, except for the woke shit. <laughs> it's just my problem with it comes to the fact that, you know, creative liberties start coming in to make it entertaining. You know, you just start saying wrong things in the film, and I have to go back and unlearn it and correct it with actual reading. I don't, I don't like, I get that it's, I cool, mean, but I, I just, I prefer to just read up on it. It's much more interesting that way. But then again, I'm a history buff. I'm somebody who likes history by default. Same here, same here. So, so. you know, for me, it's a little different. That's why I always, I, I don't really care for, uh, what you call it, biographical films or, you know, films about this legendary figure uh, in this event, this, that. I gloss over every single one of them. 
I don't find it entertaining. Wow. Um, per, I don't. I don't care. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. You know what? You know what hasn't been put to film yet? The person who stabbed Martin Luther King. That still hasn't been put to film. I don't believe. Right. That's I wouldn't know. I don't. I don't watch those type of films. Yeah, he was stabbed and sent to the honest, hospital. I really... If I remember correctly, it was by a black woman. It was because of the Red Scare. Yeah, they thought he was a communist. They stabbed him at his own uh, public event. That's an interesting story. I mean, they haven't done that one. But I, I mean, I wouldn't watch that film either, to be honest. Like I said, it was an interesting thing to read about. There's a lot of really interesting things to read about that I just don't care to see in film because I know a film is trying to entertain me first. That's You're like a nerd. That. Generally, that's that that that's 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 I, why I, I just <laughs> that's why the majority why. of people don't read as much as we do. That's why the well dried up for me. <laughs> like that's why I said there's this black trauma shit. I was like, damn. When the Harriet Tubman one uh came out, what what was it that recent one? Yo, I saw the I saw the trailer and it was looking like Assassin's Creed and some shit. And I'm and um then I saw the reviews and I'm like, oh oh. And I saw that, and I publicly said, oh, a Harriet Tubman film. Next. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck do I want to learn about Harriet Tubman for? She's not doing nothing new. All right. What, what I hate about these films is that we are too afraid to do something different with the, uh, with the, uh, sorry, with, with the history. Like, white people, they remix their history all the time. They, um, what was Abraham Lincoln Vampire Slayer? I think that's what the movie's called. Right. Abraham how come we Lincoln don't do that shit with our characters? Or how many times our, they put with our people? Fucking Nikola Tesla in everything. <laughs> it was always Tesla. <laughs> well, it was, I, th- I think he was in the Prestige. I'm not. I'm not exactly sure, but that movie it's, was about clones and <laughs> shit. Yeah. So you know, I, I mean, we don't take advantage of that either because I guess we have to have some sort that's of. That's the thing. Over- I. I I'm one of my short stories I'm writing about next mm. has uh, what's the guy the the guy who traveled in the box uh, the during who? slavery the doctor no um traveled in box, the box brown I think is that's the name uh, box brown slavery I mean I, I couldn't tell you there Henry Box Brown that's his name what did he do so he he uh, hold on. <laughs> He escaped to freedom at the age of 33 by arranging to have himself mailed in a wooden crate in 1949 to abolitionists in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And he died. He wasn't killed. He died of old <laughs> age. <laughs> that was, that's smart, though. And I'm and, and, and in the story that I'm writing, it's like, okay, what if this box takes them to different dimensions like different worlds with aliens and stuff like that that's different but i'm still do it but i know i'm gonna have black folks like why are you disrespecting history disrespecting black american history by making by making that person a joke and i'm like how am i making that person a joke if you want to know more about him read a fucking book you know who i would love to see a story about or a, a movie about if they're going to do any historical figure remix, I would love to see John Henry. That would be interesting. Like, oh, you mean go, Steel? You mean Steel? No, not Steel. Zach. Uh, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> uh, which Whenever I think about John Henry, you know, are you talking about the guy with the hammer? Whenever yeah. I think about him, I'm, I'm always thinking about Steel, the Superman character. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> That's so unfortunate. Uh, which called Tristan Strong punches a hole in the sky. I think that was actually uh, inspired by John Henry. I need to fin- like start this book because I did get it, but mm-hmm. it's it's actually uh, inspired by John Henry, uh, written by a black writer, and it's a it's a YA novel. And I'm not too thrilled about YA. Aren't you were writing one. No, no. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I don't know. The, the characters aren't exactly young, but mm-hmm. I mean, it does have a lot of the YA hooks. Like, but yeah, know. like my, my thing is, we, we just have to, we have to push for think outside the box. Ah, it all ties together. We have to think outside the box. And I think we're afraid of doing that because we're already afraid of losing the bit of history that we've captured that we've recorded you know 
So that's why we always strive to record as much as our as much of our history as possible in these different mediums. But you know, because you know, because the, the whole fear about white people whitewashing our history, so we gotta beat them to the punch. Are you saying I'm, we have to make some black medium? <laughs> <laughs> ah, you get it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was that was actually terrible. I forced the shit out. It of was. I'm sorry. Call, call me Sue Surf. I I get I, I I gave you you know fake props. I'm sorry. But um, yeah, that's like I said. I get it. But yeah, we just have to get out of this mindset. And and whenever oh, there, there's this movie um, with Joey Badass in it, mm-hmm. where he repeats the same day and he gets shot by this white cop, and it looks so corny. Uh, is that a groundhog day flip yeah Uh, two distant strangers two distant strangers follows a day in the life of a cartoonist see that would be interesting until they throw another (laughs) (laughs) a a young black guy trying to get home to his dog the morning after a promising first date but they just have to throw in the whole white cop suits them and then he just starts the day and i'm like oops well it was almost good. Like I said, <laughs> like that's the problem with me. Like, I don't know. Every time I see something like that, I immediately just go on to the I agree. I agree. Because it's just like, damn, we were right there. Like we were talking privately in the messages. You were telling me about the story where the, the serial killer makes painting. Yeah, it was, it was, it was this uh, painter. It was an indie film. And I, I tried so hard to find the Kickstarter, but uh-huh. um, I, I couldn't find it. But it's on Kickstarter. And it's this black guy who uh, makes portraits out of his uh, victim's blood and all the victims are white. And apparently it was inspired by the Black Lives Matter movement and we were uh, right black there. pain. And I'm like, we were right there. Like as soon as I started reading the second part of that paragraph, I just went, oh, like the zebra, <laughs> the zebra gum just lost its flavor. Like I was like, oh, that's interesting. Oh. I was like, this would have been interesting. And I saw the trailer, and it, again, this is a, a low budget production, but I was like, it's still interesting though. I, I watch a lot of crappy movies every day, so you know, I, I, sorry, crappily produced, just because it's. I uh, mean, you know, Jesus but, fucking Christ! Imagine if Hannibal Lecter had a, a piece about the American Revolution in it. It's like the reason he's doing this because he's getting back at the British. <laughs> Like, <laughs> like, come on, man. You almost have an interesting premise and then you just, th- like I said, I feel like this is ruining our, our creativity because it's just not very good. Because and another thing is we, we have a lot of, so we, we have a lot of black writers trying to be relevant. So what's the first thing that comes to mind when trying to be relevant as a black writer? <gasps> Let me talk about the, the, the protest and there's there's this great um i forgot what it's called but stan lee's in the documentary and stan lee talked about sorry stan lee spoke about how he would write these stories and of course they there would be uh meaning to them but all, all the messages would be in the background the story came first and then the messages the underlying messages were in the background so right. that gave it replay value and that gave it more meaning we don't do that anymore. You can have it's all in your face. <laughs> hold on. Now you can have a story be very overt. Like, sorry to bother you was extremely overt with its messaging. Uh, but you have to like actually handle it correctly. Like, I I, I agree. Department. I agree to an extent. It, it definitely I it was to, overtly anti-capitalist yeah. and you know uh code switching. But it, it, was, it was fun though. That that's right. it was a it fun, was fun. Re- that's what I mean. You can have it be overt. But you can't have the overtness of your messaging be like. Sorry like, to bother substitute. you. Was overt. Get out was you know it was very the opposite. I, really, it was that was super in your face. It was clear. What, clear start, I mean, like, for black folks, yeah, but for the general yes, audience, okay, yeah, yeah, like general. that's what I'm, that's what I'm talking about. Like the, the general audience. Because True. The, gen- the general audience still doesn't understand. Kill my white, white people. Villain. White people okay. thought. <laughs> white people thought Get Out was a comedy. <laughs> yeah, I I still don't understand certain parts. White people not understanding that you know white liberals were the enemy of Get Out, 
and uh like i said they didn't get the whole the cotton picking in the ear thing like there were so many messages in that movie but again, right if it was over if you're white me. you're not <laughs> like it's overt to black people yeah who, it was definitely over you know, to me yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like and, for, for black folks that's what i'm saying it's overt but, but yeah. it's not like right. if you're aware of of what's going on yeah and the history and and black culture and and white right. liberalism then it's gonna be like oh okay i see what you're doing yeah okay all, there was so but for much the money. average audience the average uh moviegoer they're gonna be like what's the what's the meaning of this and similar to the whole uh this is america music video Right. Where you had and afterwards you had a whole bunch of videos of white people. They're they're picking apart the, the, the music videos like and this, you know, slaves will wear these pants in night. 19- <laughs> right. And then you had uh what was her name? Nicole. And I'm like, you, you you now just figuring this stuff out. <laughs> there was Nicole Arbor, I think, who did the This Is America, and it was like Oh, the, the was it the version. white version? Yeah, I was like, why do you have to do this? I why do you have to do it? You could have left it alone. It didn't need a remix. You didn't need to put yourself in it. But that's what they do. They put themselves in it. They always do it. They always do it. In fact, another video I was just watching, um, one of my favorite uh, streamers and video content creators is actually Vosh. Mm -hmm. And he uses woke. And a lot of white people use woke. I mean, even Trump was using the word woke. I and mean, they they use woke to be to denounce, I, I guess, certain things, right? Yeah. And I'm just like, y'all do, and they also use the word based, and I was like, you do realize these words were originally just like for black folks, right? These yeah, were, and I don't think anybody says based anymore. Oh, a lot of people say based actually, but they say it white ironically. people are just a lot of okay. yeah. They say it ironically, like black people don't say based anymore. It's white people now. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. That's and I don't I'm think like, we, I don't think don't people are paying anymore. props to Little Be the Base Guy. And I don't think they know he exists and that he made that word. Like, I, I mean, we remember yeah. him, but it's like, what's what's he up to right now? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he actually does. He did a lot of uh, public speaking uh, during pre-covid i don't know what he's doing post-covid to be honest but people love to hear a little b the bass god speak i would love to i would pay a thousand dollars for a ticket for little b just to hear him speak he's fucking hilarious yeah i don't know about a thousand I, I think that character i think that character is funny <laughs> as hell i i don't know about his rapping though like i like his, his song against the crazy thing about his rapping is he can actually rap did you what he wasn't remember that that uh the uh the cypher with Kendrick Lamar and I think Yellow Wolf was in it and and um I forgot the other guy's name. I gotta see that cypher now. Lil right. B can spit. Lil yeah, B he can, can spit. actually rap and then there's times. But he, he 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 doesn't rap seriously on purpose. Right. Like it, that's his whole thing. So yeah, he he does he does on purpose what Hobson does on accident. Oops, I did it again. <laughs> I've 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 stopped picking on Hobson for a little bit because I, I won't. He 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 is a product of he he is a product of being around too many white people, too many white people not understanding American history, not being in touch with Black culture. He's a product of that. The man does the whole like uh, what you call it, the contacts thing and everything. I mean, I he's not the first to do the contacts. He's not the first he's black not, rapper to do the contacts. But he's just corny, corny as fuck. That that is true. But I, like I said, I'll I'll say before and I'll say it again. I'll give him his props. He built an entire label worth millions by himself and a few friends, and did his thing. So that that's fair enough. I, I got to give it to him. Like, hold on, does he own the, his label? He owns half of it, I believe. I'm not sure what happened. There was a fallout with Funk Volume, and uh, I, I believe he still owns part of it. I have, I have no idea. Like I said, he, he's he's on he's on that like whiny bitch sit where he um, disses anyone that he perceives as a threat to. He he reminds me of a bipolar chick. Let me just put it like that. Damn, why it got to be a chick? <laughs> oh yeah but uh what's it called okay it looks like funk volume is defunct and it's distributor warner bros figures 
Uh, well, yeah, I think they I think they sold out sometime. Um, it was in 2016 for what it's, yeah. like it's been listed. Yeah. Okay. Well, damn, he sold. <clears throat> Sorry, he didn't sell. He at least went down with the ship. So I can't be mad at him for that. I mean, he has his own company now, Undercover Prodigy. So, well, they sold. He he started his own company and yeah, found it 2016. So that that makes sense. Like I said, I'm the brother's corny, but I'm not gonna knock the hustle. I, I don't I, knock I the hustle ever. Right? That's I that's another black hustle. man. I just I, I I just don't respect you know some of the antics and shit. Uh, what you call it? Uh, yeah, let's get back on topic there. Uh, what you call it? shit we were talking about the um what you call it getting out there and getting mm-hmm. from underneath this umbrella of actually making black pain because I, I already got sick of it i'm gonna be honest with you as a theme it's boring as shit it's really fucking boring i can't tell you like how many times i've seen it i i can't tell you i i, I don't want to watch uh what was it them is that the new one Oh my my! I believe my uncle Phil uh, saw that one and he said it was trash. He, he okay. hated it. So. There's them. A lot of um, people disliked it. Um, I wasn't they, interested because it's the whole. Okay, we have horror. So what's scary for black folks? Racism. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, y'all don't have a, a creative thought in your head. Uh, let's see. So it was when when they see us. I'm not watching that. There was Antebellum, which sucked as well. I'm not watching that. Um, I should watch Lovecraft Country. It's good. It's good. Like, like, like I said, it's it's one of those shows where it's, it twists the theme on its head, at least. Yeah, like, like I said, it explores racism with the theme of horror. Then there's also white magic, black magic, time travel, parallel universes, right. uh, different dimensions. You know, so it gets crazy. Like there are these creatures, and like I said, it, it explores the concepts that you would want it to explore for the genre. You know, it's not. It, it tries to teach you, but it's also. It also goes there with, like, like I said, with the genre. Right, and I think that's good enough. Um, Jesus, there's more. There's so many more projects, but it all boils down to, like, the black pain thing. They just keep and we boiling the, down. We have the as same a, problem in the independent community as well. It's a central which, theme, actually. I don't believe so. Oh, really? Independently, well. Independently, I feel like there's a lot more creative bounds because a lot of people can self-publish their books. Mm-hmm. Uh, N.K. Jameson makes a, a fantastic amount of work in pretty much everything she makes. I, I'm falling in love with this author, so uh, what you call it? I'm currently reading the Broken Earth trilogy. I'm on the Broken final Earth. book. Okay. Yeah, the Broken Earth trilogy. I'm on the final book, which is The Stone Sky. Fantastic book series her world building is incredible and i'm going to be reading the Ten Thousand kingdoms next and then the city we became because i waited for that one to come out oh uh, science fiction fantasy okay yeah I'm, I'm gonna check this out uh then i just got binti i got that uh tristan strong punches a hole in the sky i'm gonna read that uh which call it i already read children of blood and bone children of virtue and Vindy. yeah i i, I, I guess those. i would have to i would have to agree with you yeah like there's a bunch of really. Good I guess I'm I'm thinking about like on a lower level of the independent community, but probably overall, like the Kickstarter. Like, I mean, yeah. even we have a a mutual friend Malachi who was doing a fantastic comic. You know, avoiding yep. the black pain subject. Uh, you guys go support her, by the way. Hey, there's a new Kickstarter coming up soon. Support it. Uh, but anyways, uh, which you call it? You know, there there is a lot of really interesting projects out there. The issue is when it comes to being put in the mainstream spotlight. I don't know how the fuck we keep getting the black pain like pushed through. Like I said, there, there, there's. I think we took a with, step in the right direction with uh, what's her name. She was like, "Hey, one of the rules: no black pain." Mm-hmm. Wait, what's was, what's uh, her name? Because I want to, I want to pay respect. Not like that. She's still alive, but you know. Oh, is it? Give respect. Give kudos. <laughs> F. F's in the chat. <laughs> Marseille Martin. 
I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. RC. But she says, uh, no black pain approach to projects. Love that. Oh, uh, link me that? What is that, a Facebook group? You want me to link the... Uh, oh, it's a it's an article. She's, she's a... Oh, uh, cool. Yeah, yeah, link me that. Let me... Uh, I feel like that's the next step that we need to take um, as a community as a whole, because there really needs to be like a massive push for this. Because as I said before, black writers aren't really getting out there as much creativity, uh, creatively, because, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're not seeing too much of themselves in fiction, which is kind of a, a cyclical problem. Uh, which God? because they don't see themselves so they just write what they they're close in proximity to and now mm -hmm. we have another boys in the hood style project or another distant that blah, blah blah it just i feel like one thing's for uh one thing is definitely has to uh be curbed and that's the the acting black thing call me crazy but i feel like that has Oof. a big problem like i, I feel like i told you all about that white girl <laughs> I feel like that's a huge contribution to this issue, right? Because it's like you see a lot of people who want to write these stories, and then inside their head they have this voice. I don't think a black person would do these things. He speaks like, too well to be black, right? Uh, would he be living? Here? I'm telling you, I, I was I was talking to that white girl that I, I told you about mm -hmm. on the phone. I asked her. I said, "Why is it that people?" why is it that people think i'm wh white or some or not not sorry why is it people think that i'm uh, i'm like i go after white women or i'm a, you know i i prioritize i, I uh, think i know the answer because you do i don't here's the thing here's the thing I'm i've only dated two white women out of the many women that i've been with all right only okay, two. okay okay so i've dated fair. more mexican women than any other race. to be fair and you're not fooling me <laughs> <laughs> I know you don't date very often. I know you be fucking a lot of white women. I'm talking about dating here. I'm talking okay, about dating, yeah, selling yeah. down, exactly. having a family. All right. Exactly. Look, You're not going to fool me. What's, that, what's, that, what's the dude, the dude who years? said, what's that dude? He said, uh, my cucumber don't discriminate. Like, you stupid <laughs> ass fuck, by the way. <laughs> like I said, I've known you for 14 years now. I, I know what you do. Look, look. All right. When it comes to selling down, <laughs> black women are for me. All right. I love myself a black queen. After okay? that last one, right? I love myself black a black oh, okay. queen. Okay. Yeah, okay. I love myself. Okay. But here's the thing. Back to back to what I was saying. And then this white chick, see like because you speak well, all right. You have a, a large vocabulary. And I'm like, like how is that how does that make me white right you don't slur your words how does that make me white <laughs> so because every brother don't sound like denzel washington <laughs> that's the see that's the shit we keep approaching blackness and this is in the black community too it's not just white people doing the shit it's in the black community too where we approach blackness as like prescriptive Things you should do. Trust me, it isn't it isn't the black community because my cousin said the same thing. My cousin was like, "Yeah, I, I knew you were dating a white girl." <laughs> I'm like, "What the? You don't even know me." It actually it actually did happen to me too at work. Uh, which call uh, one of my coworkers said, "What's your girlfriend look like?" I was like, "She's black." Uh, you know, she's uh. That's all they wanted a, to know. She's a thick woman. Oh yeah, it, trust me. All she cared about. She's like, "All right, I just cared about the black part." Exactly. Like, oh. Exactly. I was like, exactly. Hold on, what makes you think that? What? Hello? She's like, I don't know. But man. that's you the thing. Like, I, I said, I said this in one of our groups. I, I was like, a lot of blurs go after white women and Asian women. And I, I won't deny that's that's absolutely true. Because of fetishization, like it's literally a fetish. Like for that, a lot of and people. keep in mind that a lot of blurs they don't know how to act. All right, like that. They, they just don't know how to act. That, that, that that's all. crazy. That shit is crazy. Because I've had people, I, I've been, I've had people look at me when I, I'll, I'll be dressed like this with the, the black jeans and everything. And when I, I'll, I'll start talking some nerd shit like coding and, and graphic novels and how I, how I obsessed over the Power Rangers. They'll be like, I did not take you for a nerd. I'm like, why? 
Oh, because man. I did because I don't act like a nerd. I t- yeah, most people hear me speaking, and I I actually know how to work five and six letter or six syllable words into conversations. <laughs> like I'll be saying words like antithetical I, or esoteric in the middle. I also of the I also think it's an insecurity uh, thing on their part because I'll I'll say a word that. Um, I'll say something like cornucopia or something like that. Yeah. And I'll and when I say a sentence, I'll I'll ask, does that make any sense? Or do you know what this word means? Now maybe it's because I say, do you know what this word means in a, a sarcastic tone? We, I have I have a naturally sarcastic sounding voice, so <laughs> maybe uh, it's because I, of that I, I, why people take offense. But I I really think it's because of insecurity because. What? I said I'm the type of dude. I have a small notepad, right? If I hear a new word. I write it in my notepad and I try to use it at least two times. I do try two, to in two separate occasions. So I actually do use uh, new words every week. I try to use a new word somewhere, you know, in text or uh, speaking. That's the thing. As a writer, I, I I find that very important because I'll be writing a story and I'll be like, okay, I've used this word like two times. What other word can I use? And that's how I learn more words, you know? Right. I mean, that's the thing. It, most people don't think Black people have large vocabularies like that. Uh, which call it? I mean, I have an exceptionally large vocabulary, and a lot of people have told me that. It's just like, uh, I've heard a lot of people call me white for my entire life, because it's just like, you know, you speak so well. You, you speak so well. Uh, you know. <laughs> Was that with Riley on the boondocks? Uh, uh, white people enunciate like <laughs> right. Let's say every every syllable. It's just that I've always been a stickler for saying things correctly and using things correctly. And when but I that's how talk, you can communicate better and convey right. what you're actually what you actually mean. Right. And like, because I'll be around people, they'll be talking. I'll be like, can you can you say that again? I I didn't understand that. I like. Uh, and, and you know never be afraid to ask questions if people don't think these are black traits which is really interesting because i don't know who does it more who does it more just is it white people who do it or is it black people who do it do what who say you act white when you do these things because black people are starting to do it like way more now and i feel like like say those exact words yeah. or convey it and i black, I mean, black either people definitely. or either or because i feel like because here's the thing when I speak a certain way, and I'm not saying that I'm code switch or anything, I'm just saying like I'm acting myself because I, when I, I, I speak, uh, I speak properly, mm-hmm. regardless of what Duran may think. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll speak and a white person will put me in this, I guess this bracket, this, okay, so he, he probably came from this kind of neighborhood. Uh, he's probably upper middle class. And I'm like, yeah, that that shouldn't be the case, mm-hmm. you know, because I, I know plenty of people who started from here, but they could speak very well. You know, they could speak a lot better than I could. I, I can. So, yeah, that's what I would say. It's, it's just that's what I'm saying. Access to information and knowledge. The Anybody can go to a public library. Yeah. You know, the code switching conversation was insane when they were out there discussing, oh, this is code switch. Oh, when you do this, it's code switch, you know, like. I could just act like that. I could just act like that in a professional setting, or that could be how I act. That could be how I speak. That could just be it. I feel like that was the problem. They feel like this type of, there, there is certain ways black people act and anything outside of it is code switching, which is a survival tactic. And it just, it feels off to me. And then white people have always been doing the whole Oreo thing. You're the whitest black person I know. And you about to have his, the blackest eye of any. <laughs> you about to have the blackest ass whooping, <laughs> <laughs> right? You know, I always hated that because it's just like, how are you trying to erase me from me? Okay, it's like you you try to disarm my blackness because you can't see that I'm black due to the fact that I speak well, I walk I had straight, a, I, I don't sag. What these are normal things. I had a white friend. Um, um, Oh, <laughs> uh, what do we mean? Uh huh. Anyway, I had a white friend who uh, he, he he was uh, he was talking to uh, my, myself and 
another black friend of mine. And he was like, you know, he was talking about some proposal to me because he's in the architecture and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And he said, yeah, yeah, I could de- design you something. And my, my friend, he's black. He, he chimes in and say, Hey, could you, could you, uh, could you design something for me? And then the white guy's like, uh, you probably don't have enough money. <laughs> and, I, and keep in mind, my wife, my, the, 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 the white dude, he didn't know how much money I had. All he knows is that, you know, I've traveled to other countries and I can speak very well. And I'm a writer. That so don't cost them that much. That right there put me, it, it really doesn't cost that much to travel. The right. only thing that you're really spending when traveling is time. All right. That, that, that's pretty much it because a ticket uh, max might cost you maybe $1,800, depending on where you're going. And uh, right. I've spent as little as $800. So it, then you factor in hotel and travel expenses, but it's really not that much. That's why I prefer going overseas rather than going to another state. If I'm going to another state, boring in comparison to something completely out different. of this world. Exactly. Well, so like I said, a lot, a lot of people, they just, they look at the way I speak. They look at what I'm doing. Um, as far as projects are concerned and uh, they look at the pictures of where I've been and they're like, yeah, I should, I should probably, um, I should probably team up with this guy, you know, he, he's, he's going places or he probably has enough money for whatever I'm, or I, whatever service I'm trying to sell, you know. And let me ask you this, do you think that bleeds into the, the black trauma writing? Like, what I mean is like, do people believe that anything outside of the black trauma, the hood stories, the the uh, historical figures being assassinated every day, do you think that is stepping outside of what's considered black? And maybe we don't consider it a black story if we just step outside into sci-fi or something. That's a that's a lot, but <laughs> I, mean, I, I think I. Yeah, I, mean, I think I, due to the expectations that we have, so here's here's the thing about white people, right? Like when you hear some, when you hear a black creator just no, 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 let, let, writing let, a story. Let me focus. It's, 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 it's a two way thing. Here's the thing about white people, right? And we're talking about white corporations, companies, not exactly white people, but um, if they knew black folks would spend their entire wallets on movies about us going to space and and uh, going to different countries to fight off monsters you bet your ass they would you know start funding movies like that all right right so in order to change in order to change that right there in order to to change the norm we actually have to change our way we, we have to change our way of thinking. We have to start pushing out the idea. That's why I loved it when C was like, my agenda is no black pain. More of us sort of, more of us sort of rooted for her. All right. For who? Not a, um, what was her name? Uh, I got to bring up her name again. Uh, Marci Martin. Marcy? When she said... Well, no, I, I thought it was Marsai. It's spelled yeah, M-A-R-S-A-I. Yeah, Marsai. Yeah. yeah, Marsai. yeah. I thought, yeah. I'm down, I thought bro. No, no, no. I don't mispronounce all the names, but you know, just maybe ninety percent of them. But anyway, so you were calling Duran Darren for a while. Your dad called him Darren as well. It's an easy name to miss. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's really not. As soon as I see that name, I, I already know what it is. Duran. Okay, but obviously your dad and I did not know it was Duran. Yeah, y'all both crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we need to start pushing this. We, we need to start pushing this notion. We need to start calling people out, even our own people, when it comes to exploiting Black pain, capitalizing on Black pain. There's a show called, uh, I believe it was called The Confederates that was canceled after controversy. Confederate, hold on, let me look it up for you. Confederates. By the Game of Thrones creators. Yeah, it's called Confederates. It was this alternate history drama by uh, David Benioff. Whatever. Yeah, it was by the ones who D- made D- Game of Thrones. That shit got yeah. canned really fast. D- B- yeah, DB Wise. 
And um, production was still going on, but then it just got canned because, hey, we weren't interested in that shit, all right? And keep in mind, I'm, I'm sure it wasn't white folks that were the most vocal on it. It was us. We were like, oh, nah, this is some, this is some white bullshit right here. This, y'all, y'all just want to see us in chains again. We ain't going to have this. And then, boom, we got that so canceled. Right. That's what we need to start doing more often, all right? But my issue is, and this becomes sort of a, a complex problem, because my issue is just start tanking these movies, not buying them or stealing them illegally until they get the message. But the thing is, people get hurt off of this. People get fired, you know, uh, people who, who the may fuck not cares? pick up another film. Who I cares? mean, here's the thing. No self-respecting black man to put him in, put, put, put him or herself in the role as a slave in a film today. All right. Definitely. We've had enough of those movies. Okay. If you want to And eat. keep in mind we're we're moving toward that point because we have we have um black actresses such as Viola Davis come out and say, look, I'm I'm sorry, I, I should never have played that role. All right. Oh yeah, now, you took the money, but you still play the role, <laughs> right? It, but you you get my point, right? We're we're moving in a different direction, and we need to see more of that. We need to start we need to start saving these companies and these actors and these actress, actresses. And we've done it before, all right, with the Hellboy movie. Okay, you, you know the recent Hellboy movie where they cast a uh, white guy in the role of an Asian character. Right. We did not like that at all. And they were like, oh, you know what? My bad. Here's an Asian actor. Even though it wasn't the correct, um, you know, nationality, like right. all Asian people look like. But it was a it was a step forward. I would still been pissed, but it was a step forward. We need to do that. We need to stop being sensitive. And we need to start being more aggressive. There's a difference between being sensitive and aggressive. All right? My alternative take is do what I said before and build up a distribution company owned by black people or at least people of color. Uh, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, shit. like, just own a distribution company. I really, really don't. Because how many more years do you think it's going to take for us to actually like get them to green light good films? Here's the thing. All right. Go ahead. Oh, I said, I said, I got my, got my vape. <laughs> as the great as the living legend fred williamson I'm, I'm i'm just gonna forget about him voting for trump but fred williamson's the man as the great fred williamson pointed out we should have been had these black studios all right well he, 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 he uh first i'm gonna bring up his uh hypothetical example will smith Samuel L. Jackson, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, I'm just throwing names off the top of my head. Very, uh, you know, very uh, successful Black actors and actresses. They can come together and build studios. I think Will Smith actually has a studio of his own. I'm not entirely sure. But they can build these studios and put out Black movies and rotate them each starring in, you know, in one, one another. And this almost happened. This almost happened in during the uh, black exploitation era. You had, uh, I believe, Richard Roundtree was a part of it. But you know, you had Jim Brown. I believe Fred Williamson was also supposed to be a part of it. Um, but you had these black exploitation actors, and they were going to try to build their own studio and put out their own movies because white people, white you know, white producers were capitalizing on. You know exploiting black people black exploitation so they were going to you know do their own films the problem they ran into is that you know the whole who's going to be on top they were fighting each other who's going to be on top who's going to make the who's made all the decisions you know and that's our problem as black people where we're looking at each other like i don't like that you have more than me always competition exactly it's always a competition and and we're too we're too busy fighting and we're not getting anything done you know so we're looking at our own pockets we're looking at our own uh success like you know 
I'm gonna do me, you do you. No, let's let's all come together and let's put out films that you know. Let, let's give each other the power that we allow them to give us. Black people historically, as a collective, have always been very powerful. So yeah, that's yeah, that's, that's why. And, and then they come and squash our shit, but you know we ain't gonna let that happen no more. Right. Uh, it looks like you were right. Yeah, Will Smith does own a production company. Uh, Overbrook. What's it called? Overbrook Entertainment. Yeah, that is good. That's good news. Um, yeah, see, Will Smith is a type to move and don't say nothing. I like that. I mean, I like that too because I, I don't think it needs to be broadcast everywhere. But I think that still needs to be kicked into high gear. Like, I, I think that more production companies need to be looking at books, contacting authors, and. Vice versa. Jordan Peele is definitely someone that I, I give props to as well. He's he's trying to do that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what you call it? He's bringing people into the fold, which I like. Uh, new directors are giving me. He's still working with Bloomhouse, which my um, only thing with uh, Jordan Peele is, you know, once you have once you see Jordan Peele's name slapped onto something, it's like oh, it's a Jordan Peele film. No, it's just produced by Jordan Peele. <laughs> he's right. not the director. You know, he's not the writer. He, he's just the producer. Right. Yeah, Jordan Peele does have a Monkey's Paw production, so. But, yeah, there's a, there you go. Uh, there needs to be more uh, of this reaching out across the board. Uh, same thing, vice versa, with uh, artists going to reach out with studios. I feel like artists need to also push forward um, to uh grab the attention of studios and just pitch to everybody do like you're doing when you're hunting for jobs throw out resumes to everybody to see what sticks you never know who who, who will pick up the stuff but um what you call it that's really uh, all we wanted to talk about here you know like for this cast it's just like black drama is just fucking played out I, i'm so fucking sick of it. it it is i agree as a genre just like a whole trope it is it's washed it's had it's had its run like personally there's like, there's no use for it anymore and if you're going to do it make it interesting put some three titty alien bitches in there or something be like, very creative do very something. creative like at this point i've already said we're behind the ball like we're behind the ball so far so far behind it i mean why that's an understatement have, they, they I still think Altered Carbon was fantastic. I, I thought it was really interesting. I haven't seen that. I have to see it. Like, the visuals are great. Like, it, it's just a great-looking show. I, I love that. Um, so many other things that uh, I really enjoy watching. The Star Wars series. You got, what you call it? Lord of the Rings, of course. That's a bunch of white people there too, and they have. How come we can't have a show about a black bounty hunter in space, huh? Like, mm. it don't gotta be like the Mandalorian. It can be like Lobo. Actually, Black Lobo. Uh, I thought it was something TV show. I forgot it was um, it was a TV show, not Bridgerton, Space Queen, somebody. Was oh, this- is that the one on Sci Fi Channel? Vagrant Queen. Or yeah, Vagrant. that got canceled. Yeah. Yeah, immediately. Damn. That, that, that's something. It is. It was. It's not a black thing though. It's a sci-fi thing. Sci-fi cancels a lot of its shows. Right. I mean, yeah, I know that, but I'm just saying. You know, that's one thing that that was an interesting. Uh, R.I.P. Blood Drive. And Happy. Like, Happy was a great show as well. But yeah. And uh, what's that? What's that one with the uh, assassins in class? Oh God, Deadly Class. Deadly Class. R.I.P. Deadly Class. They changed so much about that comic, I just couldn't... I couldn't deal with it. It had been a while since I read the comic, so I was like, okay. They changed so much about it into the TV show, I'm glad they canceled it. I was like, damn. There's a whole dude... I mean, that's because... A villain for an arc. Like, I was like, he died in the comic really fast and unceremoniously. That's the thing. I, I, I try not to compare the comic with the the adaptation because then it's going to be like, ah, they, they, it, it's similar to the boys, you know, as long as they take it into a different direction, I'm good. 
I mean, but if they're I, trying to be as close to the source material as possible, then I can see when, you know, my, the mind starts comparing. Well, when they start straying from the source material, that means they have to write things. And a lot of the times these people writing. Yeah. And if the writing is good, if the writing is good, the writing is good. If it's bad, then it's bad. You know? Yeah. Generally it just it feels bad. I mean, walking dead has been so far removed from the comic that it's unrecognizable at this point. Like Carol died in the comic so far ago, I don't know how she's still around. But wait, the show is still going on. The show's still going on. It's still in the current. Why season. wouldn't it die? It's it's a Walking Dead show. But anyways, let's wrap this up. Uh, this has been Black Medium. Love talking with you guys. We'll catch you guys next time. Peace out. Peace.